building a fountain that there's nothing more satisfying than you've taken a pile of twine and turn it into a, a fishing net that's actually going to catch something. There's a, a pride in every piece of a gear that we build when you're out there using it. I became a waterman uh, when I got out of the service. I, I went into construction and, and uh, decided I wanted something different. So I moved to Southern Anne Arundel County and started working the water full time, something I, I enjoyed uh, being around as a kid. My father would take us all over the place and we'd be around it. It's a Peak Bay waterman is not just a, a fisherman or a crabber. We uh, build all of our own equipment, whether it's crab pots, whether it's pound nets or uh, our boats, we do all the maintenance on that type of stuff. So as a Chesapeake Bay waterman, you wear a lot of hats. You're a painter, a carpenter, a mechanic, um, a seamstress. Business can't operate without your extended family being part of it. Between the sails, the hours, um, the shedding of the soft crabs, uh, planting the oysters, it, it takes an entire uh, family uh, and friends and community in order to, to do this, this occupation. I am John's daughter, um, and I started probably when I was about 10, going out on the boat with him uh, for summer breaks, winter breaks, crabbing, oystering. You know, I just felt like I was being taken away from my friends and I didn't understand it why I had to, you know, constantly go out there with them. But looking back, it's the best thing that they could have done. And I wish I appreciated it more then, but I definitely understand it more now. I would stay at the house and sell the product, crabs, oysters, fish, while he's able to go out on the water and stay out longer. I'm 12 years old. I go on the boat with my grandfather. Um, I oyster, crab, and fish. What I do with the fishing, I pull the net up, I scoop out the fish, and I um, sort the fish. Hopefully without getting poked, because the fish all want to poke you. I, I just learned that how to pick up a fish like a perch or a rockfish without getting poked. <laughs> A pound net is a stationary piece of equipment that's set in the Chesapeake Bay. It's an old piece of equipment. There's very few people on the Chesapeake Bay that still do it. Uh, but when the fishing isn't good here, um, we can't pick it up and move it. Where we use trees, telephone poles that we go out in February and cut out of the woods and drag them out of the woods. We're going to have a, a leader, a fence that starts at the shallow water at shore and heads out. When the leader ends, it's an opening about 30 feet wide or 15 feet wide, where the heart poles start. So you've got the leader ends and then two poles on either side with a gap between them. And then the heart has got poles driven. It makes the shape of a, of a heart like Valentine's Day. And six feet of the end of that heart is actually into the square cube, which is called the, the crib. The twine and the net that's not made, it's just piled in these boxes and then it will turn into this massive fish net that looks like it could be gymnasium thing that you go through and it's I think that's the coolest part about it. I figured you know it's a good time to I guess start from the beginning with learning how to sew the pound nets and you know he's the only one that can basically do it right now for his own company um, and why not learn it so there's more than just one person doing that. My hands are getting old and don't like holding a needle very much. So uh, my, my attraction in getting uh, Carly involved in, He's recruiting. in is, is so that in the winter months, at the very least, there's a paycheck for her, but there's also somebody to sew the nets. Looking and watching John do this, I thought it was going to be a lot easier than it actually was. And just making sure that you're paying close attention so you have all of the, the right spacing, because if you don't, then the entire net can be trashed. It takes hours just to learn to cut the net. If you're gonna go down 200 meshes and, and cut it in half or, or to part it out, uh, if you make one wrong mesh cut, which is very easy, you turn 90 degrees and it'll go in a different direction. Even something as simple as loading the needles up every night, you know, loading a couple pounds of twine into needles so you didn't have to stop. Different thought process, which she's seen, but she's always seen it from somebody that, yeah, I'm gonna go in my room or I'm gonna go do this. This year and last year are where I really learned about the net. We want to be there before sunrise or all of the birds will eat the fish. Whenever we get the, enough net, try to go from right to left. We make sure that there's no holes where the fish can go out. Hayden has learned so much because she's stuck with me five days a week. 
uh, she, she's on the boat. We, we go out and fish during the, the school season. So she's out there with us at the crack of light. I'm glad that she's picking up more of the sewing. Um, and I'm glad that Muscles back here has picked up more of the fishing. <laughs> there are a lot more men in this industry, but there's also women and girls and we're strong just like they are and we can do just as much as they can. Stronger. Yeah. Stronger. See, see, we try to show the girls, I do, that, that there are other ladies out there. There's ladies out there that run their own boats and run their own crews. One of the biggest advantages of, of me working on the Chesapeake Bay, for one, my office is on the Chesapeake Bay, whether it's pouring down rain or whether it's uh, hot, it, you get to experience everything. I sat and had uh, lunch and watched the Patuxent River uh, knit ice across it. I mean, it's, it's, you don't get to see those in an office. I like it because I get to spend more time with my family. Yeah. Do you think it's a, a, a part of what defines you today? Yes, because it taught, it taught me a lot. You don't always have to do everything by yourself. You can always like listen and learn other things. I do enjoy learning from John. I think it's a good thing to pass down, you know, like all the, all the family members, all the females, um, the granddaughters, daughters, we've learned a big part of it. So I think that's what I like most about it. It's stayed in the family. All, all the girls have done wonderfully over the years. It's, it's been a, a joy. If I had to pick any other occupation, I couldn't pick one that I'd be able to bring all the kids involved into it. You know, at, at, at the end of the day, um, our environment that we're in is the, one of the best places to raise a family.